Hello friends, Swaroop here. In this presentation, it will be better to say it will be a continuation of my third video presentation where I have shown you how to implement operator overloading. But that was in regard to the console based application. And this time I want to make use of Windows form application. Well, what the difference is? Let's check out as I execute the program. Here you find the Windows form and text box. So user is free to provide whatever input he or she wants. So let me go with the input of these two numbers and I click that button which would display me the result very smoothly. So in this presentation, I will be demonstrating the concept of operator overloading, but I will extend it in regard to the Windows form application. So let's go and check it out. So let's come to the design part. And even before that, let's come to Solution Explorer. This time I'm not using any extra class. I will be working on the same .cs file, but it will be having a multiple class. So initial GUI is very same like all other videos what I have got. I have taken uh, two variable, one and two. User will provide input to these two respective text boxes, which will be typecasted and will be stored in these two variables. And now I'm making use of a new class called my data, which I have borrowed from my previous video. Over there, I have made use of one variable. Here, this is my parameter def default constructor. This is my parameterized constructor. So this parameterized constructor I will be using well for passing inputs. So as you can see over here, the operator overloading comes in picture. And I already said in my previous video to implement operator overloading, we don't need any reference variable. So we are using the keyword static. And the operator keyword has to be written along with the operator, which you will be uh, extending its functionality. So I will be passing on two uh, reference variable by the name D1 and D2. As you can see over here, I have taken another third reference variable and here I'm adding uh, the reference one and the reference two. So by default, this feature would not work as I already said, if not operator overloading is implemented. So the, import, the, the value of O1 comes to D1 and the value of O2 will come to D2. And here I'm creating a third reference variable where I will be storing the summation. So d1.x, which user has provided in regard to the first text box, and d2.x, which the user has provided in regard to the second text box. So those two numbers will be coming in the respective manner, as you can see over here, O1 and O2. Okay. So these O1 and O2 will be represent the two respective text box contained, which I am going to add up and then I'm going to store it in this particular reference variable. Uh, and then I'm going to return it back and the return is of the type my data. So naturally the return reference variable will be of the type my data. And then I am displaying them individually. So the first instance, uh, I mean, the first value was stored in the first instance. I am uh, here. I'm displaying the second value was stored in the second instance and the third at the return time is stored right over here. And that's what actually got displayed. So for the last time, let's go and run the program once again, as you can see over here. So I'm supplying some other respective values and then I'm going for the addition. The import is working pretty smooth and fine. Okay, so that's all for this video presentation. Wait for my next video. Until then, have a nice time.